What's going on, everyone? Train Freak here, and today I've got a original Atherm Genesis uh, Union Pacific EMD SD70M that I am installing sound in for a custom. Over here on my desk, I have this um, locomotive here. Uh, this is a EMD SD70M. This is an Atherm Genesis. Like I was saying earlier, uh, Steve is saying it's not the copyright or not, it's the style. Okay, Steve. I, I just wanted to kind of pump you up and, you know, some techno. Man, you got to do it that way. Hey, uh, Mike Pringle's here. Welcome, Mike. All right, so one thing to note when you have a locomotive, especially one that has... Oops, if I can get it back in camera. Ditch lights. And these are actually working ditch lights um on the front of the locomotive you need to know which railroads use the ditch lights for the grade crossing logics and which ones did not now union pacific does not have alternating flashing ditch lights and you might say wait a second i have seen some union pacific locomotives that have those alternating flashing ditch lights and yes there are some out there but those were not originally Union Pacific uh, locomotives. Those are actually locomotives that were acquired from the mergers of the Chicago Northwestern and Southern Pacific. So the first thing that I had to do was you got to do a little bit of research. And it's not real hard, so I'm actually going to show you how. So this locomotive number is 4528. So one of my favorite websites to go to is railroad pictures archives and you can actually see here that you know it says um emd sd70m and it says built as up4528 sd70m so that will tell you um you know that that is a straight up union pacific locomotive and it was built in 11 2001 so for some of you that are sticking to a specific era um, this is a really, really good site uh, to use um, because if I was to go and look up another type of locomotive, let's say, let's look at the Dash 9, for example. So C44 Dash 9W, you can look here and see that there's a whole bunch here that say like XSP. And then if we scroll down, we might see some XCNWs in there as well. But they have like a whole bunch that are, you know, X, S, let's say 9615, for example. You can see it patched, you know, painted patch, scroll down, and you might even just see it in straight up yellow like that there. And so noting that this is UP 9615, but it was built as Southern Pacific 8151. So something, you know, good to kind of keep in your back right, pocket. So and I'm going to have to position a few things. And I've got my chat on my phone, so I should be able to kind of help keep up with some of the questions as they do come in. All right, so like I said, this is an Atherm Genesis, and it does have wired-in ditch lights. So the first thing I'm going to do is i got to take the coupler boxes off. Ah, there we go. i got one working now. And we're going to do this side as well because we got to get the shell separated from the chassis. We will be doing most of the work on the chassis itself. Now, I have not opened this locomotive, so I have no clue uh, exactly what is inside. So, your guess is as good as mine. It's not very often that I come across the older uh, Genesis locomotives. There we go. There's my screw. And then like I said, once we take the coupler box out, uh, the front where the plowing stuff is, then our chassis should just come right off. All right. 
All right, so now I'm just taking off the, the wires. I'm not going to take off all the lighting wires. I'm going to leave those on for the time being. But I am going to take out the rail connectors. And I'm going to also take out the motor feeds. And so the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to take it and just snap it back on place and we're going to start by tinning all of our wires and getting where they go so hopefully this installation won't take near as long as the last one the last one i had to do quite a bit of um isolation on the motor and things like that and had to add a wire to the motor this one here pretty much has everything which is which is great and if you are wondering the flux that i'm using is alpha om 338 it does not cost me it actually costs more to get this shipped because you have to keep it refrigerated and so they have to put it in a box with dry ice and next day it to you. Go ahead and get some solder on my contacts here. Or flux, I mean. Now what I'm doing right now is just tinning my wires. And then I'm going to get some flux, or I got the flux on the contacts. I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on the contacts. And get a little bit more on that one. Here we go. Just to have a good bubble so that way I've got a place to stick my wire. I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers because the wires are pretty short. And that seems to help. Which sometimes short wires is really good like when you try to put everything back together. And sometimes I will take the locomotive and spin it around instead of trying to work on the opposite side. Stick those in me flux. There we go. Split rock. What's going on, B? Now, a good question for split rock is, and that's even if he even keeps up with uh, all the different locomotives he drives because he is an engineer for Union Pacific. Now you're going to have to go and look at and see if you have driven a uh, locomotive 4528, and that is an SD70M. Because if you have, then you are you have driven the locomotive that I am putting a decoder on. Okay. Pretty much. I'm sure you have lost count of all the different locomotives you have driven. That that wouldn't surprise me actually.
All right, so now we got our motor wires soldered up. <clears throat> and do your best not to inhale smoke. Because solder smoke is definitely not good for you. All right, and then what I did was I took the last bit of the wires and I just tucked them under the board and above the plastic piece that for the motor clip, just so that way they would be out of our way. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop one of these um, clips off and pull that wire out. And I'm going to go ahead and tin that wire, these are uh, actually going to the backup lights. So that way I can go ahead and get those soldered in. Now, right here on these back two connectors, there is a rectangular connector and then there is an oval. Well, not connector, but contacts, I mean. A rectangular contact and an oval contact. The front side also has the same, a rectangular contact and an oval contact. The oval contacts on both sides are your lighting commons if you have LEDs. It's a three volt, I think it's a three volt connection. Uh, if George was watching me, he could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's three volt. And the contact here is going to go to the front headlight and then the this back contact here goes to the back headlight. But since now we're using these incandescent bulbs that come in these Atherin locomotives, instead of using these oval contacts, we're going to actually send all of the common wires to this one single 1.5 volt common there. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to put some flux on this contact, the rectangular one, and we're going to put in a solder bubble or a bead or whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to take that wire and as we get it hot, we're going to try to stick that wire down through the hole that is already there. All right, so I went ahead and tinned my wire. Now these contacts are so close together that sometimes I will take a toothpick and scoop up the flux that I want and just get it only on that one contact that I need it on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stick that wire in. See if I can't try to get it to hold down maybe. Sometimes they say helping hands help, sometimes it don't. And just get a bead, a solder, and bam. All right, so on the front headlight, we're going to go to that front section of the board. or the front rectangular contact because we're not messing with the oval. Get some solder on my soldering iron. And tap it in like so. I think I got them all. And let's get some flux on this so we can tin all that together as one solid piece of wire. All right, so we're going to just try to go for the home run. How about that? All right, see if I can get some solder. Because, see, I have like an electrical piece or some type of thing right beside this contact, which makes it real tricky. 
even with the fine point, it would still make it tricky. All right, let me get that wire out of the way. All right, y'all, moment of truth. All right, there you go. All right, so that is all wired up except for one last thing. And that is the spakers. And we're going to go with a couple of mini cubes. I'm going to put one towards the front of the locomotive and another one towards the back. Right. So I've got my handy dandy helping hands down here. So I'm putting a speaker on it. And for those that are curious how that actually looks, uh, it's just a piece of masonite with a clothespin backwards. And so it makes a really good helping hand. So pretty cool DIY project. I can't take credit for it. Uh, when I went to the Soundtracks training class, they actually gave me this. So, so I'm going to use some super small wire from a snips and see if I can't trim this wire back. There we go. And get the toothpick to get some of that flux on these contacts. That always helps. Yeah, let's see, I want to go ahead and get that tinned as well. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, so the top is positive, the bottom is negative. So that is sometimes you do have to pay attention on some of the speakers, what's positive and what's neg. Oh, come on, get in there. Because sometimes that does matter. And that's got too much wire showing. Perfect. Let's see how this looks. So that way y'all can see that wire just hanging off. There you go. So now I got to do the other one. Let's see, how long is this one? Oh, okay. That's going to be my bridging wire there. We'll do that then. All right, so now I need a shorter wire. We're going to go red on this one. It might help if I had some solder on the iron. Get, get a little bit on there. There we go. All right, we got one speaker wired in. Now we got to wire in the other one. All right, so now I've got our two speakers wired up in series. And what I did was I used a red wire for the positive, a blue wire for the negative, and then it doesn't matter which wire that you use in the middle. Um, for this instance, I had a lot, you know, an extra blue wire because I think I used red on the last one. So because you're literally going from negative of one to the positive of the next. But I do recommend two different colors 
uh, for what's going to the board, so that way you know what's going to the board. All right, that wire is in. Now for the positive. That wire is also in. And sometimes when you have wires that stick below, these uh, snips work real good to cut that excess wire off so that way you don't have bridging between your wires. Alright, so decoder is done. Now the fun part is going to get the speakers up underneath. And so what I like to use is some of this double-sided tape by Scotch, and it's 3M. And pretty good stuff. And I will put some tape on the baffles. So that way, once I get the baffle... up in the shell that will hold my speakers in place now the fun part is is when you have all this here extra wiring getting them in there can sometimes be a pain in the butt and I'm gonna have to go all the way to the very back on this back speaker because I have to be careful of the uh, the chassis and then this one let's see where do we want to put this one I might be limited just to one there is that possibility because I do have part of the chassis but I think I'm gonna try to fit this one in right here if the shell doesn't go all the way on then I will have to take this speaker here out but we do want to try to go for two on this one because it just sounds so much better when you have two speakers. Okay. Moment of truth. See if we can get the chassis on. And y'all, it looks like we are in business. All right, and there is my other coupler. Okay, so we have officially finished the decoder installation on this locomotive. So now.